Well guys, I got a package from Rune in Norway, and the uh, package is full of locks that I'll probably never be able to open. Maybe this one's included, I don't know. This is a Haybo. It's got a little T thing on the B. Don't know quite how to pronounce it, so I'm going to call it a B. But nice thing about this oval lock is, well first of all, it doesn't look like it's ever been opened, so I doubt that it's a challenge lock. But it has awesome bidding and it has seven pins. You notice we have, in fact, let me show you on the back of these locks, it's got a number here. So you got, uh, see so if I can read this through the camera, 631146. So when you look at the key, there's the bidding 631146. I don't know if six is the maximum cut but sure looks like it and it's hiding behind this valley of very low cut should be a lot of fun to get access to and that's the kind of bidding I really like to see the thing about this though if you look at the keyway fortunately for me anyway at least it's wide open take a look at that so when I go in I'm gonna to try to use this is a 15 thousandths by ref tat I'm gonna take the pick, I'm going to have to turn it sideways to get it in the camera angle, and I can work from the bottom. There's enough room for a 15,000 to bypass that piece of warding, that piece of warding, and that third one right there. Just go right by and access all those pins to get some awesome pitch and reach uh, up inside of that pick, uh, up inside of that lock. So let's go, that's enough talk, uh, let's see if we can do it. Okay, let's see what we got. I'm going to start red, white, and blue. Start with the red one. It's probably, oh. Now, that is a perfect fit. That is the way they're supposed to fit right there. Okay, that's the 1.2 millimeter. All right, I use that 15,000 by a rev tattoo. Let's see what we got. All the way in, light tension. Figure if it comes from Norway, it's probably just chock full of nasty pins. Looking for a binder. Okay, that was a that was pin three. I got one click on him. We got no turn the core. Springy, all these are springy. Caught up back there somewhere. Came on seven. Got a little click on him. And a very slight turn on the core. Not enough to brag about, but let me give a little nudge. Yeah, he's okay. I think he's set. Looking for the next binder. Getting no feedback, no counter rotation. Nothing. All right, I'm going to go back to seven, see if I can get positioned on him, and maybe give him a second click. Nope, he's not cooperating. Might not be the right pick. Oh, there we go. Pin three. I got a very slight turn of the core. Got a click out of him. heard something drop. There we go. Pin three. I'm getting some counter rotation. He's probably a spool. And a good solid set. It was four. A little deeper fault set. And hopefully we get some counter rotation or something here. There's counter rotation on two. Okay, good. So we know we got two spools in here. I'm on seven now. I'm, I am getting a little counter rotation on him. Okay, that's definitely set. And there we go. All right, a little bit of delay there, but 
let's take a look and see what's inside of this thing. I don't believe it's a challenge lock, but it could have something interesting in it. Maybe some spools, maybe something strange from Norway. All right, let's go ahead and pry that thing off the back. See if I can make this happen without hurting anything. Come on. There we go. That's why you get the right tools. Okay, move all that stuff out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and lock it back up because I do have a key. Turn like that. And we've got a little gap here. And I don't know what's in there, but just to make sure nothing falls into that little crevice right there when we do uh, pop this core out, I'm going to turn it very slightly like that. And if I can find a shim here, I'm going to try to slide a shim just to bridge that gap right there. Hopefully that'll work. Okay. Take our follower. Put him like so. And hope for the best. Let's go. That follower is not working. Too big. Okay, let's try back up. Try a different brand. Maybe it's slightly smaller in diameter. That's much smaller in diameter. All right, let's try this guy. There we go. I'm hitting something. There we go. Come on. Man, he's fighting his way all the way out of there. Come on. It's just a little bit small, but the big one definitely won't fit in there. All right, let's just pull them the rest of the way out. Okay, we are caught up on something here. It's caught in that ledge. For sure. Let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and take these pins out first. Uh, not ideal, but it's all I got to work with here. All right, get out of there. Get out of the way. Standard. 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 Another standard. And I'll bet I know what these last two are. Come out. Come out. There we go. Okay, guys, we have a dilemma here. As long as I don't pull that out of there, I should be fine, but i got to figure out a way to get him past that crevice. And there it is, right there. Okay, we got it all jammed up. We definitely got some spools in there, and you can see what happens when you use a follower. It's a little bit small, but that big one definitely did not fit. All right, let's go ahead and pull these out one at a time. I'm going to have to reassemble this guy. All right, there we go. Now that is a cool looking Christmas tree spool. That is something you get from an older ASA. That is very nice. Let's see what else we got. Come out. Come out. Standard spool. Nice deep cuts on that one. Come out. Another ASA. We'll call them Christmas tree. Very nice. Combination. Almost a combination of serration and spools. Okay, I'm going to have to pull out the shim to get the rest of these guys. Come out of there. Or go in there. I really don't care. Just do something. There we go. All right, nice deep spool. Another spool. Wow. Oh, it's a standard pin. Look how he's tapered on both ends. You'd think that would make things easier rather than harder. And the last one is another one of these Christmas trees. Um, all the springs are standard. Here's an example of what it looks like. Steel springs. But you can see they all are stock. All perfectly level 
with the top right at the shear line, just the way they ought to be. So, um, take a look at the core. Unlike a Ruko, there's no sleeve on the outside of this to create an edge, and I certainly don't see any threading or any uh, countermilling in there. Thank goodness, because that would really make it difficult to pick these. Okay, there's what we're looking at, guys. Bottoms, all standards, and on the top, we're looking at one, two, three Christmas trees, three spools, and one tapered standard. Anyway, Rune, thank you, sir, for the lock. I have never seen a hay bow. Now we have. Thanks for your time. Stay safe. Stay legal. <laughs>